The Parliament of Fowls by Geoffrey Chaucer Summary In The Parliament of Fowls, Chaucer expresses his thoughts on art and love. He acknowledges that life is short. But learning the art of poetry is a challenging and time-consuming endeavor. The poet derives pleasure and knowledge from reading. One day, he stumbles upon an old book, The Dream of Scipio by Cicero, that captivates his attention. He diligently reads it throughout the day. In the dream of Scipio, Scipio the Younger, a Roman general and senator, has a dream where he is visited by his grandfather, Scipio Africanus. Africanus takes him to the stars and discusses virtue and the rewards of the virtuous in the afterlife. Scipio the Younger asks about the existence of an afterlife, and Africanus, who is already among the virtuous dead, affirms that our earthly life is like a kind of death, while true life resides in heaven. Africanus and Scipio observe the heavens and engage in a conversation about Stoic philosophy. Africanus advises Scipio against finding excessive joy in earthly matters, as they are insignificant compared to the grandeur of heaven. Scipio seeks guidance on attaining heavenly happiness and Africanus advises him to have faith in the immortality of his soul. He further explains that those who work for the greater good will swiftly reach heaven, while the wicked will remain tormented, revolving around the earth, until their wickedness is purged. After the poet stops reading the book, he goes to bed and reflects on how the content of his reading may have influenced his subsequent dream. In the dream, Scipio Africanus appears to the poet as well. Africanus acknowledges the poet's choice to read the book, which was highly praised by the biased Macrobius. Africanus promises to reward the poet for engaging with his work. The poet concludes by appealing to Venus, the goddess of love, asking for her assistance in accurately portraying the dream and granting him the ability to create skillful rhymes. In the poet's dream, Scipio Africanus leads the dreamer from his bedroom to a gate that grants entry to a park. The park is enclosed by a mossy stone wall, upon which two poems are inscribed. One poem is written in gold, while the other is in black with each positioned on opposite sides of the wall. The poems convey the idea that some individuals who enter this garden will discover peace and happiness, while others will encounter misfortune and unhappiness. In the dream, the dreamer hesitates to enter the garden due to fear of making a mistake. However, Africanus reassures him that the verses inscribed on the wall do not apply to him. The warnings and promises are intended for those who are devoted servants of love. As the dreamer has had no success in love, he is exempt from the implications of the verses. Africanus humorously remarks that although the dreamer may not actively participate in love affairs, he can still observe and document them much like an infirm person who enjoys watching a wrestling match. Taking the dreamer by the hand, Africanus leads him into the garden, which possesses an otherworldly beauty, adorned with various types of trees. A river flows through a green meadow, accompanied by numerous birds and woodland creatures. This place resembles a utopia, where aging and illness are absent. Cupid, the god of love can be seen crafting arrows beneath a tree near a spring. As the dreamer traverses the garden, he encounters several allegorical figures representing different aspects of love and romantic relationships. These characters include pleasure, fair array, courtesy, joy, deception, delight, gentle breeding, beauty, youth, foolhardiness, flattery, desire, message sending, and bribery. Essentially, all the elements and intricacies of love and love affairs are embodied symbolically within this idyllic setting. In the dream, the dreamer encounters a temple made of brass, supported by jasper pillars. Dancers and pairs of doves surround the temple. Lady Peace, Lady Patience, Promise, and Cunning are present within the temple. 
The air is filled with the sounds of lovers sighing, and Priapus, the god of fertility, resides inside. Venus, accompanied by her attendant riches, lounges in a corner of the temple, wearing a translucent drape. The walls of the temple are adorned with paintings depicting both virtuous virgins and individuals who led lives of debauchery. The dreamer then leaves the temple and returns to the garden, where he encounters Dame Nature, the most beautiful allegorical figure he has seen thus far. She is seated on a flowery hill in a grove, surrounded by a multitude of birds from all around the world. The birds have gathered on St. Valentine's Day to select their mates in the presence of Dame Nature, their sovereign lady. Dame Nature holds a particularly beautiful female eagle, Formal, who is being pursued romantically by three male eagles' tersels. Each tersel professes his love and devotion to the Formal pledging loyalty and worship to her as their sovereign lady, rather than merely as a mate. However, the debate among the Tursals remains inconclusive, as it is unclear who loves the formal the most. The other birds grow impatient with the prolonged discussion and express their desire to depart, feeling that the love affairs of the nobility are not of their concern when they have their own mates. The turtle dove advises the birds not to interfere, prompting a response from Dame Nature, who calls for a judge to be chosen. The tersal falcon is selected as the judge among the tersals vying for the formal. He determines that a battle is necessary to settle the contest, instead of relying on debate. Despite their readiness to fight, the battle is averted when the goose intervenes and suggests that the formal herself should make the choice. This leads to amusing arguments among the various bird species. The duck once again criticizes fidelity and love, while the cuckoo advocates for all birds to remain single. The merlin disagrees with the cuckoo. After the commotion, Dame Nature commands silence and declares that the formal must choose for herself. The formal, in a maidenly manner, expresses her inability to make a decision and requests another year to consider. Dame Nature grants her request, instructing the Tursals to remain faithful in the hope of renewing their pursuits the following year. The other birds pair off with their mates, and a roundel is sung. The dreamer is awakened by the noise and returns to his books, seeking to gain better knowledge from them.